And in our top business story, as a founding signatory, Abu Dhabi's Mazdar is encouraging governments and energy, water and related industry stakeholders, as well as laboratories and research organisations, universities and NGOs, to join the Global Clean Water Desalination Alliance, H2O-CO2. Initiated by Mazda in collaboration with France and the International Desalination Association, the initiative was launched in Paris during the COP21 meeting over the weekend. The Clean Water Alliance is a collaborative global climate initiative and one of the key components to the Lima Paris Action Plan. The Alliance has an initial group of more than 80 signatories from government as well as the public and private sectors. With forecasts predicting that by 2030, 47% of the global population will face water scarcity. The Alliance's goal is to seek solutions that will sustainably reduce the projected increase in CO2 emissions from the desalination process. From 50 metric tonnes of CO2 up to as much as 270 per year by 2040. Dr. Ahmed Belhoul, the CEO of Mazdar, stated that as one of the most water-scarce countries on the planet, the UAE is investing heavily in cutting-edge technologies to improve the energy efficiency of the desalination process. The third edition of the Internet of Things World Forum has opened in Dubai, showcasing more than 20 digital city and connected industry solutions, while also offering attendees the opportunity to find out how smart cities are looking at ways to achieve their digital transformation goals. Event organizers and officials representing Cisco stated that the Internet of Things is creating a new world of possibilities through digitization. And as the world enters a new digital era, organizations across both the private and public sectors will have to change their strategies to approach the shift in infrastructures, processes and outcomes. During the forum, organizers stated that 50 billion devices will be connected by 2020, posing both challenges and opportunities for various companies as they try to connect with various stakeholders to provide a seamless experience to their customers. Organizers stated that Dubai has come a long way in such a short time span, and it has rapidly transformed itself into becoming one of the smartest digital cities in the world. What we're seeing is, as you said, the thing that holds Internet of Things back is really the interoperability and the ability to not only get the data, but make that data actionable. So there is some movement and some interaction with the data that progresses people's lives or open up new opportunities. What we're do, seeing cities doing right now, they open the citizens' data for application developers. So it's based on standards, there is security involved in that, but if the city opens up citizens' data, then some innovative application developers can come and start developing those new innovations and new ideas around Internet of Things. We actually are seeing Dubai getting involved in some of those initiatives. Dr. Aisha is very progressive and she's looking at some of those initiatives, getting involved in some of those forums. So we are hoping to see Dubai actually leading, leading the way for other cities to be able to open the data and bring those developers in. On the sidelines of the forum, various companies from the region and abroad, including UA telecom operators such as Esalat, are showcasing smart city solutions, especially for residents. Those attending the conference will also get the opportunity to participate in smart city tours and also experience these solutions firsthand. A number of seminars and discussions on how companies can work on actionable data are also being held while implementing IoT initiatives. When you think about whether it's Dubai or any city, when we are building a new city or you're transforming a city or revitalizing a city, there's a great deal of focus on the physical infrastructure. That means how many roads and how much greenery and how tall the building should be, what should the zoning be. But well, what very often misses, uh, is missed is the digital infrastructure. How will all the technologies connect with each other? Most cities are almost run on the mechanical world. They're not even into the electronic world. Forget about the digital world. So the first thing is, can you physically and seamlessly integrate physical infrastructure with 
digital infrastructure. And if you have a campus, one could be on one company which is very smart, the other one could be on a different company for building management that is very smart, but they don't talk to each other. So when the uh, protocols don't talk to each other, each subsystem is smart, but collectively the building is not. So if one building is smart, but if it's not connected to the other smart building, if your lights are not connected to the traffic, your bridge expressways, then you're going to create subsystems that may be smart, but collectively you don't have a smart city. And that's where data integration becomes important. But the point is you have different departments, different functionalities. They have their own ways of doing things, different companies with their own technologies. So bringing them all together is what requires this public-private regulations and also uh, partnerships to create this seamless integration. IoT is not a one-man show, so it's about different players because you have the devices, the sensors, you have the connectivity, you have the platforms to manage those devices and gather the information. You have the final applications. So it's about uh, gathering together different players to provide the solutions. As a telco, first of all, of course, we are in the connectivity, providing high-speed broadband from different type of accesses, 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi. We are now even talking about 5G. But not only that, we are managing the SIMs, we can manage the devices, provide the devices, provide the platform, and also through partners provide the final application. Everything in an end-to-end -end offering. So we transform all the effort that the companies have to do instead in terms of buying the devices. So we provide everything as a service on an OPEX base. Emirates Airline has signed a memorandum of understanding with Germany's federal police, which will enhance screening procedures on flights to Germany. According to a statement, the agreement will see specially trained Emirates personnel with extensive knowledge of Germany's immigration procedures, performing the travel document screening procedures. The checks will be carried out at Dubai International Airport for those travelling to Frankfurt, Munich and Hamburg, as well as Dusseldorf. This will also include a secondary screening check at the gate prior to boarding an aircraft. The statement revealed that the agreement will also reduce the time Emirates passengers spend going through immigration upon arrival in Germany, and that the new procedures have already been put into force on all Emirates flights into the country. The UAE is committed to supporting OPEC in order to maintain stable, cost-effective and efficient crude supplies, as announced by the UAE Minister of Energy, Suhail bin Mohammed Faraz Faris al mazrui heading the country's delegation to OPEC's 168th ministerial meeting in Vienna on Saturday. al mazrui attributed the increase of crude supply over demand in 2014 to the 88% output increase by the non-OPEC producers. He was quoted in a local daily saying that the move by many major companies to cancel production capacity expansion projects would increase a balance in the supply and demand. Amazuri also predicted a growth in demand by 1.3 million barrels per day in 2016 and stated that he was confident that the market will stabilise next year.